welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So, uh, we don't know what the name of the next Infinity War movie is no. yet, still. Or do we? This episode's going to come out, and they'll have announced it like an hour before. Yep. This, uh, this event is written by Jim Starlin with art by Ron Lim. It is like a quintessential Marvel Cosmic event from 1993, mm -hmm. in that it has everything to do with three characters. Thanos, Thanos, Adam Warlock, and a version of Adam Warlock's personality. What? Sweet. So, like, you remember Infinity War? Wait, yeah. is that who's on the front cover? What, this female no. Adam Warlock? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the last one, Infinity War, was about how Adam Warlock, when he wanted to become a good uh, steward of the Infinity Gauntlet, and then later the Infinity, the Soul Gem, yeah. uh, he had to split himself. He split his good part and his bad part, yeah. and the bad part was the Magus. Yes. And the Magus dominated the story of Infinity War. Yeah. Well, where's the good one? And that's the goddess. And the goddess is the good is all the good of Adam Warlock, who also happens to be a malevolent being who's gonna destroy everything. <laughs> so he's just he's just a bad dude. He's just just a just a complete asshole. <laughs> so what you're saying is Adam Warlock sucks. Yeah. And Adam Warlock's just an asshole. Says... I'd be very careful to say that Adam Warlock sucks because and, he has a lot of Well fans. he does suck though. I mean <laughs> And Jim Starlin knows that he sucks because he split his sides into good and evil and they both and they're both evil. bad. <laughs> You know, I mean, is he one, trying to say something about like if you're like purely good, like you're gonna become like a dictator or yeah. whatever? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you live long enough to see the thing. You, yeah, to, a, you, you need see yourself you, become the villain. Too much yeah. balance in one direction is not a good thing. Right. He's well, that's basically not trying balance. to say that everything is as all things should be. It should be perfectly balanced. Right. <laughs> I mean, basically, he's saying you like, don't go you know, too far. You can't you can't go too far in any extreme. Right. Which, you know, which Adam Warlock learns a lesson about, I guess. Look, I am extreme in believing that you can't go too far in extremes. Well, then you are an evil You person. can never go too far to the extreme. Only Sith deal in absolutes. <laughs> it is another sprawling cosmic Marvel epic that stars Adam Warlock. And the concept is that Adam Warlock has split himself in twain, although there's still Adam Warlock in the middle. Right. So whatever. Wait. How is he? Well, he purges he his takes evil the... and his good. But he's still evil. like the same person afterwards. Right. So it's like he copies. Yeah, I guess, but it, his it, it, good. It, he takes the manifestations of his good mm. and his evil, and they become their own entities by virtue of his limitless power. Okay. Whatever. Adam Warlock is then just an emotionless douche. Oh, so he does change. Yeah, he's okay. He is. He becomes unencumbered neutral. now. Yeah. Ah. That's at least that's what he did in the first place. Right. So uh, we we cut to the most important place in the Marvel universe, Monster Island, where the uh, <laughs> Infinity Watch have taken up residence. Uh -huh. uh, the Infinity Watch are all the characters that Jim Starlin likes to write about, uh, who are also Adam Warlock's fr best friends, <laughs> and they are each stewards of an Infinity Gem, or yeah. as they were, and they are called the Infinity Watch, and they watch over these gems. Uh, this is another story with Pip the Troll in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do this. He's integral to the story, so you better buckle up. <sighs> Because if you don't like Pip Man, you're not gonna like this book. Uh -oh. Pip Man is essential. There is a sequence, Pip however. Man? Yeah, well, he when he teams up with the superheroes, he's like, oh, I need to have a superhero costume. So he puts on like this intricate '90s looking costume and refers to himself as Pip Man. <laughs> For his troubles, the Hulk bathes That's... him because he smells so bad. <laughs> it's riveting, so, riveting storyline. Well, strapping because there's more. Uh, Maxim, a character who is now a member of the Infinity Watch, is testing his strength by having Drax push on a big, heavy object to, mm. like, hooked up to a machine. And who is Maxim? Oh, Maxim is this yeah, member the of the Watch. Infinity Watch who is from the future, who was set in the past, but doesn't remember what he was doing there in the first place. Uh, so is it really irrelevant that he was from the future? Yeah. <laughs> but we just, we ran out of mutants. But he's so from the gonna... future, so that's cool. Yeah, and that's really cool. And he can augment his, his body density and size. He oh. can get big. Okay. That's all you need to know about Maxim. He's a giant Gotcha. Man. And he's, and he's on the side of the Infinity Watch. Yeah. And he lives on he's Monster good Island. Guy. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, anyway, Warlock is just kind of like kicking around. He goes into his uh, meditation room and he's just like, you know, I'm feeling weird and bad. And I'm always like, you know, thinking about the universe and my place in it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have questions. And, and so he asks Eternity, the physical embodiment of the universe, about them. Mm -hmm. And Eternity is like, I don't have time for you. Fuck <laughs> off, Adam. Do you know how much is going on in here? Yeah, everything. I got the Literally whole universe everything. In here. Yeah. I got a tiny version of you asking me that exact same question in here. <laughs> exactly. So then, it's real confusing. Like, this uh, beautiful physical entity uh, appears before him, mm. and she's like, "Do you not recognize me?" And Adam's like, "You do seem familiar." And she's like, "I will. I am the goddess." And he's like, "Huh? Wow, the goddess. That's a pretty grand title." Kind of like the Magus. Oh no! And then she zaps him. So, oh, so she's immediately not good. 
Yeah. No, that is good. <laughs> well, no, it's, Adam, good it's Adam Warlock. Because screw Adam Warlock. Yeah. So uh, Adam Warlock's out, but he immediately comes back because he's integral to the story. Right. So, because uh, he is the antagonist and protagonist of the story. Yeah. So uh, the goddess then, like, begins her machinations. And so across the world, different superheroes are seeing sigils representing their various faiths illuminated in the sky. Okay. So, like, Living Lightning sees a cross, and Sasquatch from Alpha Flight sees a Jewish star, and so forth. Okay. And they're all, like, wondering why, and it's because the goddess is projecting them. She's influencing these select group of people, who are also superheroes, to become part of her religious zealot army. And uh, Mephisto checks in on it, and he's like, oh. no, that sucks. <laughs> so... I'm in the book too. And I'm in the book too. And it's 1993. And normally, if you see me in 1993, I look like a Venus flytrap with huge tits. Yep. But in this, I look like what Jim Starlin wants Miss Pisto to look like, which is the devil. Which is just a, just the character just, he used to write just, about. Just the devil. Just the devil. <laughs> Literally. We established that the goddess somehow has dominion over all the cosmic artifacts that the Magus stole in the Infinity War. Hmm. That while Magus was distracted in, during Infinity War, the goddess snuck in and took all the cosmic artifacts that basically grant her the same type of power as one would have if they had the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh -huh. So now she <clears throat> is a nigh omnipotent being. Uh, when you in, say cosmic artifacts, like you're talking like cosmic uh, cubes, cosmic cubes, and portions of. Uh, I vaguely remember exactly. that there's like they don't really come things. into play. Yeah. So all that we need to talk about is the fact that like they're. Elemental, they're super powerful. super powerful forces that she can use in conjunction with each other, even though they're never meant to be in conjunction with each other. Yeah. Right. She takes physical form and becomes the goddess in this, like, cool suit of armor. Yeah. That is very reminiscent of Adam Warlock because she is the physical female embodiment of Adam Warlock's feminine side and also all his benevolence. Okay. Uh, we find out that not only are people in the superhero community affected by the goddess's omnipotent benevolence waves but right. so are basically every man woman and child on earth and perhaps across the cosmos i was gonna say just earth that no like Earth special okay does that just, just mean because we care people right? are nicer to each other yeah everyone's just kind of like drops their uh their conflict right because they're all now <clears throat> excuse me focused on like a singular purpose yes yes, yes. she visits storm and she's like, Storm, you have a loving heart, and you have a belief, and you're part of my uh, my cadre now. And then uh, she's okay. like, these chumps. Yeah, and she's like, and you too, Jean Grey, and you too, uh, Sue Storm, who is oh, wearing okay. her sexy 90s boob window costume. Oh, nice. Great. Wait, uh, is she grabbing just females? Uh, no, she also grabs Daredevil, no. and Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange, and Captain oh, wow. America, and Thor. Anybody who believes in a higher power of mm. any kind. That's a shame. It would have been hilarious if she was like, no, just women. Um, yeah, just grab, just grab, just... But that will be set from Atlantis Attacks, which is a way terrible Marvel event <laughs> that we did. Oh, we already did. Yeah, that's the, that was the Brides of Set. That would be too reminiscent of that. And Jim Starlin is nothing if not trying not to be derivative. Mm. So yeah, he enlists uh, Quicksilver. Just basically anybody who believes in God or some kind of higher power. So by process of elimination, we know who the atheists are. Big time. <laughs> like Iron Man and Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Reed Richards. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she also enlists people like Firestorm and Moon Dragon and U.S. Agent and other characters uh -huh. that were very popular in the '90s, but nobody would care about now, like Wolfsbane. So, <laughs> and uh, some guy on a Pegasus with bat wings. Yeah, that's Black Knight. Oh, he's like the most Christian, right? True. I seem to Which remember is why him he had like a chalice in the. That was that was a Black Panther. Yeah, but that was a version. Oh, that was a of different him. version of him. That's right. But it's not too dissimilar in terms of like his holy crusade. Right. Uh, oh my his, god. His vision is a chalice. I think it's like the Holy Grail. Yeah. And while all this is going on, Drax and Maxim are just still testing each other's strength. Yeah, they're having an arm wrestling contest. Nice. Well, it's very important. Well, we're seeing like how they're doing that while the goddess is connecting with Gamora. Why don't they just fucking mm. get it over with? <laughs> Who, Drax and Maxim? Apparently. They could be a power couple called Draxum. So she enlists uh, Living Lightning and Moon Knight and everybody, and she's like, will you join my Cosmic Crusade? Will you aid me? And they all, in unison, join her and say, yes, yes, we will, goddess. Uh. Well, uh, what are we doing? Exactly. <laughs> so while they're... Hey, there's your reaction right there. What? what? So they're all leaving, and Sue's going away, and Reed's like, hey, Sue, where are you going? I didn't give you permission to leave. <laughs> But like, <laughs> so didn't tell me where oh, you were going, Christ. therefore uh, you cannot leave. Yeah, so they're all leaving, and their various teammates are like watching them leave, and it's, yeah. they're just like, ah! Don't and, worry, I won't be here. 
It's like I always am. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile, Pip the Troll notices that uh, you know Moon Dragon and uh, Gamora have been have been taken, and so he goes into Adam Warlock's room, and it's just a emptiness, a vast empty space. He's like, "Oh, what the deuce!" <laughs> Oh my god, he says, what the deuce? What the deuce is going on here? Which is what weird the deuce because, indeed. because Pip has a... Uh, like, well, a like a growl kind of talk. He has an elocution like, hey. like, a, like, a, like, a, like a guy from the Bronx. He's a cabbie. Yeah, he's a cabbie. Hey. He's the cabbie. What the deuce is going on here? Yeah, never <laughs> in, in their life. <laughs> from Scrooge. It's yeah. that guy. <laughs> so the, the heroes all band together. They're like, okay, a bunch of our more popular characters have been <laughs> absconded. We need to form a plan. So right. they all get together ah. and they make like a, a list at Avengers Mansion to figure out like who's been taken and, and why. Was that something that the thing was doing? Was wearing a helmet at that time? Yes. Uh, you see, uh, <laughs> at one point or another, uh, Wolverine had go. one of his Berserker rages and he slashed the thing in the face. And we discovered that underneath the thing's rocky exterior, he has like puffy, gross, pink flesh. And the thing, who normally has like a self-esteem issue, felt that now that the pink, fleshy, squishy stuff underneath his rocks has been exposed, that now he's a horrible, gross-looking monster. <laughs> so while he was in uh, <laughs> battle with some scrolls and whatnot, he grabs a robot head and then just shoves it onto his head. There. Because they forgot that it was a robot head and, be and it became a mask. And so he's wearing this mask. So <laughs> it's just a way to nine to five the thing. Right. Like we gotta, it's got to have a cool thing on it. The us. thing can't have a big gun, okay? He's really strong. It right. will be stupid, but we can give him a cool helmet. No, give him a big gun. He's so strong, he can carry, like, the biggest but of guns. But they can all do that. Like, so can Cable and Bishop. Yeah. But uh, the no. thing... But the, the thing is even bigger. Yeah, but the thing gets to wear this stupid helmet. <laughs> I like that he doesn't like hollow it out or anything. He just shoves it on. There's <laughs> just like pieces of robot, just like always head, falling like, in out there. of his helmet every once in a while. He turns I'm not sharply. a wire. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, thing. thing. You thing. want me to like clear out that? Uh, no, I'm a no, horrible it's fine. monster from Yancey Street. All the superheroes like meet up at Avengers Mansion and they like piss and moan and complain and whine and argue and try Where'd to figure out- Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Where are they? Why do they do this? Why would they leave? Because Jim Starlin mm. clearly just thinks all these people are a bunch of stupid asshole clowns. Yeah, well so look he, at them. Yeah, right? Like these muscle-bound morons. No one's as cool as Adam Warlock or Thanos. Or Pip the Troll. Or Pip the Troll or Gamora or Maxim. The goddess decides, well, if I'm gonna be in charge of shit, I better pull a Beyonder and make my own planet. So she builds a planet and calls it Paradise Omega. And Paradise this, Omega. Yeah, and it's gonna be like more or less the source of her power and also where she'll hatch her, ne her nefarious schemes. It's her base. It's, it's also the base. end of Paradise. Yeah. yeah. So, so the last she, Paradise. she transports her zealots onto the surface of Paradise Omega and then erects a cathedral and makes them go into it. Then she says, fight for me! Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is this just Battle Planet? <laughs> yeah, is this, God is it, damn it. Is this Secret Wars again? But like more annoying? <laughs> is the cathedral to her? Like is it to worship her? Oh yeah. So Pip the Troll teleports Reed Richards to the Infinity Watch to ah. explain to them what's going on. Okay. And then uh, Reed Richards is like, okay, so Reed Richards gets like the whole full rundown from the Infinity Watch about like who the goddess is, or at least like that the goddess is responsible for all this crap. Uh-huh. And so uh, Pip the Troll goes with Reed and brings Drax and Maxim with him, and they all meet up at Avengers Mansion to continue to like jerk each other off. <laughs> so uh, meanwhile, at the uh, Paradise Omega base, they're yeah. all like getting their marching orders and basically uh, the goddess is like, okay, I have to go put myself into a cosmic egg that is powered by all these cosmic artifacts and whatnot that will be the incubation chamber for myself to have the power to enact my my pure uh, goodness scheme. Her, her, her beautiful, you know, world transcendental alteration right. plans. I, become I a love butterfly. that you call it a scheme. I was I would wish she does the exact same thing. And now I will enact my benevolent scheme. I mean, I mean uh, plans. plans. <laughs> yes. Uh, did she you say as, scheme? I did not. No. <laughs> it was your imagination. Yeah. I really thought you said scheme. No, no, no. It seemed like kind of a thing a villain no, might no, say. No, no, no. You think that, but no. You see, because... <laughs> Why? Uh, how could that be? Why would I, I am the that? goddess. Exactly. Uh, so, that's a good point. <laughs> So uh, the, 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 the zealots are all like having their, their, their meetings and uh, God is like, I'm gonna go into the, the egg, so I'm gonna need some agents here to kind of like enact my will and right. keep well, these in people the in line. Because yeah. remember, they're all kind of like under a kind of hypnotism. They can be shaken out of it, by the way. But like, mm. for the most part, they are beholden to her. It's like they're caught in religious fervor. So right. 
she puts Moon Dragon in charge because Moon Dragon has the Mind Stone and whatnot, and uh, so okay. and, and Moon Dragon is also a powerful telepath in her own right. So, oh, so she disseminates the plan very easily. Exactly. No. And uh, and Moon Dragon also has like maybe the mental fortitude to be able to like keep most of these people in line. Okay. So Moon Dragon gets put in charge and immediately starts bossing people around, telling them what to do. Yeah. But uh, so we cut back to the meeting at <laughs> Avengers Mansion where they're still sitting around. They got a stack of papers. They're clearly working very hard. <laughs> They immediately whip out their dicks and start measuring them. Uh, <laughs> Drax knocks the thing out. The Hulk starts getting into a fight. Everybody yeah. starts fighting Jesus. for no reason. And then yeah. Reed Richards like barely keeps the room together. And they're all trying to like figure out what the hell's happening. And Pip the Troll is trying to talking. like yeah. There's a lot of talking. Look at all this. Pip the Troll is trying to like you know be like I'm important too. And they're like shut up. God, Pip, get out of you here. You suck. So <laughs> and you're short. The goddess constructs her egg, and then she goes into it. Meanwhile, like uh, Lady Gaga, not goes unlike, into the yeah. egg. Maybe, maybe the Lady Gaga's a big Jim Starlin fan. Maybe. So, uh, they 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 figure. Oh, a couple of them muse about how like I can't believe that I wasn't chosen to go with the goddess. Not like in it. <laughs> not in a, like a weird, oh! creepy like. Right. I, maybe I will. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. But more in a like I thought I believed in God. I guess I don't. Interesting. Like the thing has that moment where he's like, I used to believe in God. Let me tell you a long, boring story about my dead aunt. Uh. Anyway, so then uh, Reed packs a couple of teammates into the Quinjet because North Star's sister on Alpha Flight, uh, she must have been like a late recruit. So she's with the team and she's like, I gotta go with the goddess. And they're like, oh, sweet. Put her in the pilot seat and she'll fly us to the goddess. Oh, They'll pilot into the van and they go <laughs> in the space. But what they don't know is that the Silver Surfer and Fire Lord have been enlisted in the Goddess's schemes, so they're like the first line of defense outside of Paradise Omega. Oh. So, uh, Iron Man, Vision, uh, Reed Richards, you know. Silver Surfer is so, a big uh, believer? He believes in a higher power. Galactus. <laughs> But since you believe in a higher power, right. I will usurp yeah, that well, higher but power. But we all know thing. Galactus exists, so like, do I believe in a higher power? Because like, I fucking like, saw him. Well, that's true. But like, he, they just think he's an alien who's kind of a jerk. I or see. they but could more than that to the same uh, And think he's like the embodiment of God. Yeah, I don't even it's know possible. if they even make the argument that like that is the like the, the chink in Silver Surfer's armor that right. allows him to become manipulated. All I know is. <laughs> He must believe in something. Yeah, maybe he believes in something beyond Galactus. One would assume, yeah. because he broke off the shackles of, you know, servitude to, to Galactus. Right. Anyway, so they go, they land on Paradise Omega, they end up in the cathedral, which has become this, like, wow. weird hellscape of, like, rocks and Floating the around egg. like Pandora. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, geez. Oh, I was thinking it was floating around much like the asteroids in one of the Infinity stories. Yeah, kind of. Oh, yeah, just floating in space. Yeah. Reed's like, yeah, so anyway, God is high. Uh, I wasn't chosen for your, for your team, uh, probably because I know there's no God. <laughs> and uh, so I was just wondering, like, what's going on? And God is like, don't, don't question me. I'm the goddess. Moon Knight is like, yeah, don't question her. She's the goddess. <laughs> and Reed's like, I'm talking <laughs> already to, to the goddess, please. And God is like, I don't care for your questions. So she just, like, teleports them back on their ship and their ship back into Earth's orbit. Huh. And they're like, showing that she's like, you can't beat me. I'm you can't powerful. beat me and like, I want you to go back to where you come from. I want you to know that I could kill you, but I didn't. Right. Because I'm good. Yes. <laughs> so the heroes then like spin their own wheels for a while, but while they're in space, Reed is like, hey, you know what? We'll go to the moon. We'll get some cheat codes from the Watcher because the Watcher's always <laughs> You know watching. who else lives in space? The Watcher. <laughs> so they go to the moon where the Watcher dwells. I am forbidden from interfering. Right? He do, of course cool. he, said, he says that. Of course that. we're not going to interfere. But uh, can you tell me everything I need to know about this? Of course. <laughs> yes. Speaking is not interfering as I have decreed. He absolutely does that. <laughs> well, he says, he says, there's nothing about my decree that says that I can't listen to your questions and like give you winks and nods and stuff. <laughs> so, But he does try to keep it together. Right. Um, meanwhile, the goddess is like, emitting her rapture waves across the galaxy, augmented oh, by the no. powers of her egg. And so as <laughs> such, like the whole of the universe is being influenced by the, by the goddess's influence and sure. power. Uh, meanwhile, the watcher is tell is, is, is throws a couple of like display screens. Uh -huh. and he's like, look, 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 guys, check this out. And like, there's a huge war going on between like the star jammers and the scrolls and the, and, and the uh, Shi'ar empire. Mm. And then suddenly they just stop. And then they just all go home. And mm. they're, and Iron Man is like, that's curious. Yeah. And Watch is like, yeah, it looks like the, the, the goddess is making him all knock it off. And they're like, 
is this a good thing or not? Should we fight her? Right, right, because like, and in war is good, controlling people is bad. Yes. So is that a good way to accomplish exactly. something? Like they, they go, they go, you know, they're like, that's messed up. They all just like kind of like freak out and wander they off. They turn them into zombies. Yes, and the Watcher's like, you don't approve? And Iron Man's like, yeah, I don't approve. Because all, it's not free will. It's not free will. Because I sell weapons. Fighting. Who am I going to sell my weapons to? I literally fly around in a big <laughs> weapon myself. So they keep asking him questions. They keep like digging information, which is, by the way, like a theme throughout the book. Is that like the clueless atheist superheroes keep begging more powerful omniscient characters for information until they get frustrated and make them go away. So they just keep begging Watcher to, t to give them cheats uh -huh. and like, you know, secret information. And the Watcher's like, you know what? I. I Go away. And so they all just teleport back to their base. I don't know what else to do, man. I basically gave you the whole thing. Yeah. You can't figure it out. Well, he ba well more or less, uh, Watcher's point is like, I can't argue with the results, but I have to say that I don't know her whole plan, and it feels kind of messed up. Yeah. So, but what's going on, though? I, you have to explain no, everything he, to he, me. Oh, he doesn't tell them that. He uh, tells himself that after oh, he picks them out. Oh, I see. Yeah. He tells us that, the reader. Right. So, But I can see that. Well, yeah, but like, like for some reason, like it's not enough for them to see exactly what she's doing all across the universe. Jim Starlin is all about kind of telling and showing. Uh huh. It's a, it's, a, it's an old school Marvel deal. You see, the 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 Marvel method of comic books used to be that like you kind of like write out an outline and then you give the outline to the artist and the artist would draw the whole comic and then Stanley would pop in and be like, oh no, I'm being attacked by fire. And it's like, I could see he's being attacked by fire, but like, well, yes, but you need me to justify writing this book, so I need to have my words in there, even if they're redundant, you see, because the art is not only great, but I'm also gonna cover it up with my words, and it's gonna illustrate exactly what the art is already conveying. Plus, see, what would you say if you were on fire? You wouldn't say, hooray, I'm on fire. You'd say, oh no. <laughs> uh, you could say, ow, this hurts. No, no. <laughs> no, but Stanley, at least, he would, he'd, instead of, oh no, sounds. Right. It'll be a little more Make dramatic it Give some, some pop. Exactly. The Absorbing Man breaks into Avengers Mansion. And they're all like surrounding him. And they're like, so who do you want to take on first? Yes. Like, for real? We're all here. And the Absorbing Man's like, no, no, no. I'm here to surrender. I, I'm, I'm a bad guy and I deserve punishment. And they're like, ah, jeez. Ah. Uh, so. She got to you too. Exactly. She got to everybody. Right. Uh, so. How come she's not affecting them? Because they they're don't not, believe. They don't believe. Absorbing, Absorbing Man, Man probably has some amount of belief. Yeah. So he must know he's going to hell. But yeah. he was not good enough to be taken. No. no. Okay, so only good guy. people were only, taken. Yeah, you didn't see any villains in her. Uh, no, it's true. In her uh, yeah. cadre there. No. Of course not, because then they start taking taking over. Well, they don't deserve um, to be. That's right. Her they, acolytes or whatever. Yeah. God would not choose the wicked to be part of his team, even if they believed in him. And so, evil God might. Hmm. So uh, there's a hilarious moment where like we keep having to like insert these '90s characters, like strong guys, a bunch of lions, sleepwalkers. Essential. He was he was raptured. Right, he's part of the team. Okay. And then suddenly Sleepwalker just like disappears. And Thor's like, hey, Sleepwalker's bailing. And then Sleepwalker goes back because the idea is that Sleepwalker's uh, host, Rick Sheridan, uh, when he's sleeping, the Sleepwalker can come out. But when he wakes up, the Sleepwalker's got to go away. Oh. That's what the alien inside of him, that's how it operates. Okay. So when Rick wakes up, he's just like, oh, crap, what a weird dream. Anyway, back to being Rick Sheridan and not <laughs> part of the story. Ah. And Sleepwalker's inside of him, like, no, I must help the goddess. <sighs> so. It's great. The, the sleepwalker actually winds up before he leaves. He's like Rick's gonna screw me. I know it. <laughs> so he spikes his orange juice to be filled with like sleeping solution, so that when Rick like has breakfast, he just knocks his ass back out. And the sleepwalker's like, "I'm back, baby." <laughs> and then, and then I, I, and I can have no influence over the story. It's a it's a weird relationship they have. All right. Very. <laughs> I set up this uh, Machiavellian scheme where uh, I'm gonna knock him out and I'm gonna put his ass into a coma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and he does. Yeah. Oh, he died. Yeah. Oops. Because it, uh, it happened so when I there was no I'm, around. So I guess I'm out forever? Oh, no! No, he needs... <gasps> yeah, because Sleepwalker needs to be attached to a living host. So. Right. Uh, meanwhile, the superheroes are all making their plan, the, the, the atheists. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just kind of like... And Pip the Troll is like, it's got to be Adam Warlock. That's a, evil ver it's a good version of Adam Warlock, I guess, or whatever. Right. But it's, it's great, because like... We, we, see, we see a concentric circle of like everybody was spying on everybody. Like Mephisto's spying on the heroes and the heroes are just a bunch of clueless morons. <laughs> and while they're all like barely scraping together the plot, the, uh, the, the, the chosen are watching their conversation mm. via a spell that Doctor Strange has 
cast. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Oh, they got Doctor Strange. Damn. So uh, it's great because like at one point or another, like Moon Dragon bitches about how like there's no uh, there's this a sound and then and Strange's like okay no problem and there's then they can hear and see what's happening and then they get all the information they need to like defend themselves from the heroes. Hey, does uh, Doctor Strange ever sit? On a chair. No, he, he levitates. He's got yeah. the cloak. He doesn't need yeah, to sit yeah. in a chair. Why would he take up precious real estate? Yeah, other people need that chair. This is a new plan. You There's know no why chairs. you sit in a chair? There's a shortage of chairs. It's because your like, your legs are tired. Yeah, his cloak holding is... them up like that is still going to make you tired. Well, that... no, no, he's got a he's got a magical cushion under him. That's true. Sporting his butt. It, it's either a magical cushion or it's the cloak. Oh, and hey, and Adam Warlock's doing the exact same pose. Yeah, yeah, they're well, both magic. That's how you show like magic users who are like doing something menial. Anyway, so uh, Adam Warlock decides, like, okay, I can't beat the goddess on my own. I could barely beat the Magus. And I <laughs> needed all of the heroes to throw themselves at him to do it and not do anything. Uh, so the only way I can do this is to also shoehorn Thanos into the story. So he goes to uh, Thanos' Starcraft and he, like, visits him. And he's like, hey, Thanos, what's going on? And Thanos is like, hey. Sup. Sup. Hold that thought. Mephisto's watching. And then Mephisto shows up. And he's the the big scary monster what? that you see from the 90s. Why he's does like, it keep changing? He's like, behold! And uh. Thanos and Warlock go, what, what are you doing? Are you trying to be cool for the 90s? Don't do not do that. Be, be Mephisto. Mephisto's like, okay. So then he becomes the Mephisto uh, that Jim Starlin wants to write about. Right. And so, uh, see, I'm aware of the other one. Yeah, I know. I just choose not to use it. Right. And I want to illustrate how dumb it is. That's why yep. I came in like that and went, Nurr! Yeah. Now he's actually effective. And I'm not going to draw him with the gross nipples, even when I have the even crazy Even when I hair. have the opportunity, I'm not going to do it. So, uh, basically, Thanos is like, the goddess has a- has access to the artifacts. That's reckless power unchecked. I can't abide that. I'm trying to, like, kind of help a little bit. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite evil anymore. I'm more, like, apathetic. Yeah. Slash, like, I'm chaotic good. <laughs> Maybe chaotic neutral more. Yeah, okay. But, uh... So he, uh, Mephisto's like, I can help. And they're like, you're a dick. Why would you help? There's no way. Right. And he's like, well, here's the deal. I'm going to help. And if you want me to, and if you accept it, then you've got to I don't. That's what, that's what drives me crazy. Okay, but I'm going to help. But I'm going to okay, help. but like when and, I do. But when I do, you owe me. And they're like, what? And he's no. like, you owe me one of the cosmic artifacts that the goddess has in her possession in exchange for my assistance. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't ask for okay, that, no. man. Yeah. I don't agree to this deal. It's not happening. Mm-hmm. Cool. Plans All right, so, so they, where so, do you want me to do now? Right, so... Go away! <laughs> <laughs> so he does. And then, uh, meanwhile, with the atheists, uh, they're, they're talking about how, like, they're, they're, they're like, what are we going to do? And they're like, oh, wait, we got Professor X, who's obviously also an atheist. And he's like, yes. uh, I'll use my mental powers to connect with Moon Dragon, so I know that Moon Dragon's one of the chosen, and she's got, like, mind powers and stuff. Mm. So he goes out there, he uses his, his, his mental telepathy. Yeah. He touches base with, with Moon Dragon, and she's like, get out of here. And she zaps <laughs> Professor X into a mental coma. Nice. Aw. So That's Professor what you get. X is off the table. Ah, but now we can walk? <laughs> he could, if he could have consciousness, <laughs> I suppose. So they're like, okay, we lost our most powerful telepath Whoops. literally by him just using his powers. Yeah. Hulk's like, screw this. Can we go? Can we just, can we go? Can we just go punch them, please? And punch them now? I'm pretty sure there was a story where I got sent to another planet. We'll just get in a ship. That's later. That's, that hasn't that's happened later? yet. That's much yeah. later. That's way later. Like 20 years later. So, uh, meanwhile... Did, they already tried to get in a ship and go there and punch him. She sent them back. But what if we did it again? <laughs> okay, Wiley we Coyote. We weren't ready. <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile, Pip the Troll has his own schemes, and he asks Vision for some information. He's like, Vision, can you explain to me what the cosmic artifacts are? And the Vision's like, okay. So he does. Here's some exposition. Uh, that's what they are, you know. And he's like, and, and like, how do I turn them on? And he's like, you just, you just touch them. And Don't like, be you, Pip. Right. <laughs> Well, how do you turn them on? Well, you would never get close to them, so you wouldn't. You wouldn't have to worry about it. But them. if you were me... Then you would just you have would just to pick be in physical proximity to them. Yeah. So Pip's like, sweet. Now it's my turn to like become the hero. And uh, so Pip's got his own plans. God damn it. I know. Get out of here. Also, stupid shoulder pads, Pip. That's... This is this is uh, this is a critique on superhero costumes at the time. It's kind of amazing, yeah. actually. <laughs> it's way over designed. Giant shoulder pads, wings on his friggin' helmet, horrible and colors. Yep. And a and a derivative stupid name. But don't worry, because like going to punch the goddess this time is gonna be a little different. Yeah. Because uh, when Reed Richards was near the egg, 
he was able to pick up on the harmonic frequency of the egg. Uh. And so now he can build a harmonic disruptor that will be attuned to the frequency of the egg so they can penetrate it and punch her in the face. Uh, meanwhile, mo uh, because if you punch a god and it bleeds, then there will be blood in the water. <laughs> and the sharks and, will come. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so then Moon Dragon goes, hey goddess, I just picked up on their plan. And the goddess goes, yeah, I was already listening. Iron Man's like, check out my sweet, awesome, totally boring design spaceship that everyone's supposed to be like aw in in total whoa, awe. Whoa! He's got, he's got two of them. Yeah. How come it's not red? Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Silver Surfer's tooling around space. Yeah. And Movie Dragon's like, hey, listen, uh, there's gonna be a ship full of your old friends. And they're gonna get here. I want you to use your power cosmic and, and just 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 kill them. Just fucking kill them. <laughs> and then he's like, that's that's not. That, that's not part of the plan. That's, that's not wait. good. Like, why, that's why would bad. I do that? Doing? That's bad. Yeah. And then hey. he's like, wait a minute. And then she's like, are you questioning the goddess? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, I am questioning the goddess. She's like, you blasphemer. And he's like, wait a minute. I'm, 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 I'm woke now. Screw this. I'm the Silver Surfer again. You're a bunch of bullshit. And then the Fire Lord shows up. Uh. There's also another, like, because the Fire Lord used to be a Herald of Galactus after Silver Surfer ditched Galactus. Right. So they're both in view of the Power Cosmic, so it's a good match for Silver Surfer. Yeah, so they so fight. So Fire Lord engages the Silver Surfer and just, like, beats the crap out of him. And then just leave him in space. Uh. Because, like, they need him to show back up in later in the story. Right. But oh, I'm not going to kill the Silver Surfer. Oh, well, he thinks yes. he might be. He leaves him for dead. Yes. And then, in space. <laughs> where he normally lives. Without his board. I it's guess. just floating away. Oh, it's over he, there. And, and it comes when he calls, so it doesn't ah, matter. Okay. But uh, so Pip the Troll stows away on the Quinjet as they all make their way. He, <laughs> he, he, I like that they wouldn't have allowed him to come. Oh, no. But uh, as he's walking around, they like notice he's there, and they don't really regard him in any way. But oh, he's, like, look who came. He, he, he basically dresses down everybody in his head because he's such a brave, cool person. And he's talking about how like lame they are. And then he's like, screw this. Okay, I've got my plan. We're close enough to the, to the egg. I can hatch my scheme. So oh. he teleports to the egg, and he then- can teleport? Oh yeah, oh. Pip the Troll has many powers. Oh. So Pip the Troll uh, teleports onto the egg, taps into the inherent power of the egg, and then, because the idea is that like, what do cosmic artifacts do? In essence, they make, they, they grant wishes. Okay. Like, they, they make you do whatever you want to be able to do. Right. right. So Pip the Troll wishes for the goddess to become salt. That was his plan? Yeah. I thought Pip was a good guy. He is, but he's also a dick. Oh. So like Adam Warlock goes to talk to Eternity. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Adam Warlock goes to talk to Eternity and where the is Adam Warlock at this point? He's, he's still stuck in the mind gem. No, 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 he hooked up with Thanos. He's, he's on Thanos' starship. He got out. Plans. Yeah, but I assumed like that was all in his head. No, he no. physically left. He, oh. he fucking got out. Yeah, he, he just, left and went to Thanos. He just got up and house. left. So he uh, so while well, he ditches Thanos for a minute, goes to talk to Eternity and the embodiment of actuality who was invented in Infinity War. Yeah. And he's like, hey, so uh, what am I gonna do about the goddess? And the attorney's like, I don't have time to listen to your bullshit. Why don't you screw off? What are you gonna do about who and the what? Yeah, uh, 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 I'm bored. all gibberish to me. Okay. Kicks him out. So that didn't work. So that doesn't work. It's just- Adam like, Warlock continues to spin his wheels. Yes, well everyone yeah. needs to because we need this story to be like forever. Yep. So, I don't think you understand. I write epic stories. These are epic, this is an epic yarn. There's so much here. Yeah. yeah. So, Pip the Troll spends an entire issue of the Infinity Watch uh, comic book tie-in speculating about what he's going to do with his godhood. Uh. Uh, most of it involves getting like sponge baths from sexy comic book I was going to say, it's going to be hot women, isn't it? Yep, And uh, but, but he has other ideas. Ultimately, a, a, ultimately, his final wish, or the wish that he's decided he's going to enact, is for everyone in the superhero community to throw him a birthday party because he's so pathetic and lonely. Then Silhouette, a character who was invented in the 90s for the new Warriors team, who has like broken legs and can slip between shadows, that's her, that's her power. Uh, she has been, she's one of the converts, hiding in a shadow near the egg the entire time. She uses her connection to the egg to grant the goddess back to where she was. To put her back. And God's like, person. nice job, Silhouette. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to like show you preferential treatment or maybe fix your legs or give you whatever you want. The Instead, answer is I'm no. just gonna say thank you and then move on. Yep. So Hey, me saying thank you is enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all I wanted. A good deed is a own reward. You. Exactly. So this was all a tie-in, this whole Pip story. Yeah. If you, if you so were to if, skip from Infinity like Crusade number three to, to four, it's just like Pip the Troll's like, I've done it! And then it's just he's not in the book anymore. <laughs> That's 
not how tie-ins just No, work. you need the tie-ins. It that's needs that's not all, a tie-in, then. It's written by, by Jim Starlin, so it's essential reading. I so, wrote it all. Why wouldn't you read it? Yeah. So Thanos nearly hits the Silver Surfer with his car on the way <laughs> through space, and then he puts Silver Surfer on the ship. And Silver oh, Surfer's like, oh, crap, Silver what do we hit? The roof. Yeah. Oh, so, put him in the car. I don't want the insurance. Yeah. So Silver Surfer's like, Thanos, you're, you're a bad guy. I'm going to fight you. And Thanos's like, oh, you drive a hard Ugh. bargain, Silver Surfer. I give up. And Silver Surfer's like, what? what's going on? <laughs> So then, like, they basically team up. Uh, oh, in an earlier story, uh, Adam Warlock takes the soul gem and he sticks it on Thanos' forehead. And he's like, you need this because you need to know the context of what's happening. And also, I need you to be able to use the, the soul gem right now. So, like, he gives him the soul gem. So Thanos is the wielder of the soul gem for a little while. That's okay. why he's a little green. Ah, yes. Or yeah, that could go Warlock wrong. Adam is not there. It doesn't. No. Oh. At the moment. Yeah. No. They, that happened before. Mm-hmm. So... Finally, the goddess is like, okay, I've had enough of these superheroes because even though I could have killed them anytime I wanted to, I wanted to toy with them, but now that they're actually possibly able to beat me uh, and the Pip the Troll almost fucking destroyed yeah. me, uh, take everybody and build a build a portal and, and, and just go to the Avengers Mansion and punch them in the face. So you they, know what it's like being salt? Right? It's, it sucks. It's grainy and it, it's coarse and it's rough. <laughs> By the way, it's like everywhere. everywhere. You get the flavor in your mouth. It's nothing but salt. The zealots open a portal via Doctor Strange. They rush through, uh, they go to Avengers Mansion, and the place is empty because they're all on a big ship going to Paradise Omega. Yeah. So they're like, oh no! Adam Warlock goes to his Soul World where he bumps into a couple of his buddies who are like inhabitants of Soul World. Soul World is a is like a realm that you can live in. What the hell is that? That's a that's that's Autolycus and Judge Krator. <laughs> oh. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 rightful residents of Soul World. They live there. That's okay. like their house. So that guy looks awesome. Exactly. He's a head with arms and legs. Exactly. So Thanos shows up with the Silver Surfer as like a mental projection with the superheroes, and they're like, hey guys, listen, you don't know all the facts. We gotta team up. And the heroes are like, all right. Mm, that sounds good to me. Yep. He's like, I'm gonna need, here's the thing, we're gonna need Professor X. And they're like, well, you can't have him because he's been like mind whammied into a coma. And Thanos is like, that's too bad, but we can still use his body though. Like, his powers are still, like, in... in he's not dead, right? No, right. Like, no, he's like, great, then we can still use him. Whatever. Yeesh. Like, well, I'll just stick my fingers in his eyes and his mouth, and I'll manipulate his Yo, brain we'll somehow. Just, we'll exactly. just operate him like a puppet. They enlist Bishop to guard the like, comatose body of Professor Hex. Hooray! And Bishop's like, hi. And then they teleport Professor X to where they need to be. And Bishop's like, I'm fired. <laughs> so Thanos, That's funny. Yeah, so, so Thanos hooks up, like, a mental device to Professor X and himself so he can use, you know... Telepathy. Telepathy. Yeah. Man, they're letting Thanos do a lot of stuff here. Oh, Thanos is essential. Yeah. Wow. So... Thanos is helping understand. everybody right Thanos now. Thanos was true. the hero in Infinity, Infinity Gauntlet, Gauntlet because he defeated himself. Yeah. So yeah. now he's got to be a good guy. Even though he's a bad guy, he's a good guy. Well, he's a bad guy well, to, like, to was plebeians. A... People who don't understand Thanos, he's, he's, he's a bad right. guy. He's sure. so complex. He's a, he's a, he's he's a, a rich, tr complex. full three-dimensional character. Yeah. So uh, anyway, they got plans and plans. Like They got machinations going right. on here. Like it's layers a multiple, upon multiple layers. Multiple faceted plan. Yeah. And this includes... Thanos' uh, secret weapon, he calls upon, uh, he, he calls a beacon to, to, uh, have, to draw in his greatest weapon, which is a dreadnought called Dreadnought 666, <laughs> which is essentially just a giant space gun. <laughs> That's cool. It's pretty cool looking. It looks cool. Yeah, it looks Where like it, it should transform so you... into a giant stupid robot. <laughs> I like that if you fired a gun like this in space, like a it giant was, ship, it would just blast this through time. It would just go back. Yeah. <laughs> they go back and fast so much that it would just go back and die. Wait, is this a gun or is this a ship? It's a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. I fire all the time and I just move through space. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a gun with engines on it. Right. <laughs> Where the engine is the gun. Yeah, yeah. I just fire and I just. You know, it's the only <laughs> ship that flies backwards. So, uh, they got the dreadnought six 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 in place. Meanwhile, uh, the reason why Thanos, of course, brought Silver Surfer on board and like made nice with him is because we need you're a being of cosmic energy. You are you are the power cosmic incarnate practically. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna need you to go near the Paradise Omega's sun and absorb all the cosmic energy you can, uh, so that you can become supercharged and uh, so that so oh my god, the, the solar energy imbues the, into the power cosmic of the Silver Surfer and like roids him out to being this like total awesome powerhouse. Yeah. That's and horrific. Gonna, and they're gonna like they're, awesome. gonna they're gonna point him at Paradise Omega and just like just f up their shit. So 
Silver Surfer freaks out so hard that he just like starts firing himself in any direction. And Drax and Hulk are in space in strategic asteroids waiting because they know that it's like he's not going to be in full control of himself mentally. And in fact, Silver Surfer's pointed in the wrong direction. So Drax and Hulk play pinball with the Silver Surfer by like hitting him with rocks such that he can direct Silver Surfer's like raw power on a surfboard at Pirate as Omega. Okay, so so Silver Surfer is rendered only able to move in straight lines. Yes. <laughs> like a rook. He can't turn. Exactly. Yeah. So the, uh, the the superhero zealots call the goddess and they're like, "Hey, uh, there's a there's an unfathomable <laughs> amount of power focused in what appears to be like a bullet headed towards us. What do we do?" And the goddess is just like not paying attention. Yeah. And so they're like, "We were uh, so then like the moon in, uh, the and then the moon, moon. It, it comes crashing into the <laughs> it doesn't it crash into the egg. It, it, the, the moon like gets in the way of the silver surfer, and the silver surfer just annihilates Paradise Omega's moon. Oh. And if Paradise Omega had oceans, it would probably be a problem. So <laughs> the moon is destroyed, and like it also emits like an energy wave that like messes up all their stuff. A few people are like hurt. Oh, no one no. dies, obviously, but like. Right. It's pretty messed up and it's insane. So like they, she sends uh, Moon Dragon sends a couple of like flyers into space to deal with the like Stark Quinjet things. Yeah. Uh, so like Thor comes out there and he like messes up their ships and they have to abandon ship and crash on Paradise Omega. Yeah. Like right. that Havoc and uh, Cyclops are tethered to each other. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, they're you know. We're not really spacefaring people, but if you put us on a string, we'll come along. Exactly. We'll shoot off the side. So uh, both crafts are destroyed. Um, Hulk and Drax fight Thor. And cool. then Thor punches Hulk in such a way that he breaks Hulk's propulsion unit. So Hulk just starts like plummeting towards Paradise Omega. Right, he's just drifting. He's just drifting. In but he's drifting well. into the dra- gravity well plane. Yeah. So, you know, Hulk's like, Drax, you gotta help me, Drax! Uh, damn it, Drax, you suck. <laughs> Or this was part of the plan the whole time to get Hulk on the planet. Yeah, kind of. It's not. But uh, so uh, the superheroes then go onto the surface of planet of uh, Paradise Omega to go fight the Zealots. Basically, that's mm-hmm. the plan. Yeah. And uh, just gonna Adam, go punch them. Right. And Adam Warlock, of course, went to Soul World not just to meet up with his good buddies, right, but also to uh, to co- to conference with the Magus, uh, who is a prisoner in Soul World. Yeah, he's frozen. Right. So. He's talking, so he, he gets to the 411 about the goddess and everything from Magus. They, 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 they tussle and they argue. And but they, they have to they let parlay. him out of the Magus, right? Exactly. Or let him out of the soul area? And he doesn't release the, the Magus. I thought that was going to be a thing, but he's like, nah, screw you. Like, I don't need your help after all. And he leaves. Oh, I just didn't want to talk. I needed to set we up, never talk anymore. We needed to set up a tie-in so that like, yeah. Adam Warlock and the Magus could like fight and talk. Just like there's a whole tie-in where Thor and Drax fight. So, meanwhile, the re- <sighs> most of the book is then is Civil Wars number zero. Like, it's it's watching the heroes fight the heroes. Right. Yep. So it's the Zealots versus the Atheists. Okay. And we see, like, who wins? And it's pretty cool. But we also see that, like, the further into darkness and battle that the Zealots get, the more violent and bloodthirsty they become. Like, Captain mm. America's like, I am going to murder you, beast. <laughs> like, I'm going to chop your head off with my <laughs> shield. He and becomes then, Optimus Prime from the friggin' movies. Exactly. I'm going to kill you, beast. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I preach tolerance and forgiveness, but I've got to straight up murder you now. <laughs> yep. So, they, they fight. I mean, like, yeah, you know, it's, and, it's, it's and if you want to see fights. all the fights, you can just go buy the book. Because, like, it's silly and dumb and who cares. <laughs> and what about that gunship, though? Oh, the Dreadnought? It's, yeah. it's coming into play. Don't uh, worry. The Dreadnought's it's coming. coming. Mm-hmm. And it's also going to cross attack. I'm assuming at some point there is just a stalemate. No. Uh, well, like it, it's it's. Just let like, me guess. We have to deal. Yeah. They face the. Uh, they fight. Then they face the goddess. Then she easily beats all of them. And then something comes in at no, the end and defeats quite that. her. Okay. It's more like it's more like Infinity War in terms of let's have all the silly superheroes in their bright, stupid, clownish <laughs> costumes fight while the real action's happening. Yes. So all the superheroes fight. So Thanos is like, okay, well, they're all fighting outside. I'm going to wreck the, the cathedral and maybe blow up the egg and stuff. So he fires Dreadnought 666 at Paradise Omega. 
then he's like, ah, you know what? The Dreadnought is so powerful that uh, it's emitting a, like, there's a force field around whatever I fired at, mm. and it is, like, reverberating the energy that I fired back at me, so uh, we gotta abandon ship. So he and Professor X, like, teleport away. Oh. And then so the there goes that giant destroyed. Ship. Oh, that didn't work. No. Like, why? Yeah. By the way. Well, at least we're here. Hulk was, uh, you know, being sucked into the gravity well of the planet. He's just falling. We like, occasionally just check back in with him falling, and then, like, <laughs> we're going to see this big fight between Maxim and Sasquatch, and then, like, Hulk hilariously, comically lands on him. On who? Uh, Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Like, lol, get it? Uh -huh. Ah, but he's naked. <laughs> yeah, because all his clothes burned off. Yeah, re-entry. On a re-entry. Yeah, so, uh, that's what happened. Thanos punches Silhouette because she's totally lame, and <laughs> uh, then he uses the mind powers of Professor X and the Soul Gem or whatever to yeah. try to penetrate the egg that the goddess is dwelling With in. With mind power. Yes. The goddess is not responding because she is amassing her power so she can finally enact her plan. And the reason right. why she wasn't like responding to Moondragon is because all the heroes and everything, they serve their purpose. Right. Now I can finally She just need them to like to distract. Distract, and I need to yeah. like, you know, trick them and everything, but like the real- I had to, I had to power up this whole time. I had to power yeah. up because now my plan is I'm going to destroy the universe and purge it of its evils and then remake it. Because uh, everyone's evil. Right. Well, there's, a, there's more evil. There's so good. much evil, I can't fix it. Yep. So I'm just going to wreck so it. Wreck it. I'm, so it, I'll go by my my freaking like human name, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> the flood. Yeah. So this is my arc. Right? <laughs> Except there isn't an arc. It's just her. No, it's just her. Yeah. Well, my egg is the arc. It be, yeah. And it, puts, <laughs> it has one fucking seat on it. <laughs> So she's just been she's literally been powering just up this whole time, like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> but she uh, she powers up and she makes the sun go nova, which then absorbs like the whole universe. So like Thanos, it's great because Thanos like shooting a beam at the egg, and he's like, "It's not gonna work! I don't have enough time!" And then everyone gets vaporized. And then like there's a bunch of tie-ins where like Mole Man tries to take over the world, and then he's like looking up, he's like, "Oh, sun's a little bright," and then he just vaporizes and everyone <laughs> dies. It's like Drax and Thor fighting, whoosh, vaporized. Maxim and Wolverine are wondering what's going on, whoosh, vaporized. You know, Thanos and Silhouette and Presser, whoosh, gone. Everybody is vaporized, That's everybody awesome. dies, everything is destroyed, the whole universe is dead. The Skrull Empire, everybody, the Shi'ar, screw it, everybody's dead. And all that's left is like a fireball with the goddess's eyes, and she's like, this is amazing, I'm, I totally worked. Uh, Let, oh yeah, I totally worth it. I totally worth it, it was, it was, it was the best. <laughs> I pulled and then it off. she snaps out of it and then realizes that like, no, I didn't, I didn't accomplish it at all. It was all like an illusion? It was all an illusion that Adam Warlock used. He, because he, Adam Warlock, basically, from fighting with Magus and from visiting Soul World, like, realized what the goddess's true intention is, which is okay. to destroy the universe. So he's like, since that's her plan, I'm going to create a universal illusion that will make everything and everyone in the whole universe think the universe died. Mm. So for all these purposes, it did because everybody felt like they were all vaporized. Right. But then, once it's over, that didn't happen. Right. So he puts it in everyone's How? mind, so even if she's reading everyone's minds, yeah. it'll still it'll look still like It'll still look it like she, she wrecked everything. So then... He, he does this just because he can. Well, no, we're going to see well, he knows, what's going to happen. Yeah, he knows that that's her plan, so he tricks her into thinking she's already enacted it. But in reality, you know, she's still like a dupe. And then Warlock, of course, because Warlock is here and is, like, the most important character in the world, like, he engages the goddess, the goddess thinks she's destroyed him, and then he's like, Naha, I didn't, you can't destroy me because I'm not really here. I'm using my, like, soul. All your powers don't affect souls. <laughs> they, they affect so the physical... projecting a soul there somehow? Yeah, using, well, using the soul gem. Oh. So... Uh, well, he has, which is a soul gem. Well, no, but he's using it via because Adam Warlock was in Soul World at the time. Oh, so Adam right. Warlock casts his soul at the goddess. Goddess realizes she can't punch a soul unless she is one, so she abandons her goddess body, and so the two Adam Warlock oh. souls, or really two halves of three parts of one soul. <laughs> basically, engage in one big fight. I like your math. Thank you. And then. Uh, Thanos and Professor X, because now that uh, the goddess has abandoned her body and her ability to control uh, you know, the coma that Professor X was in, 
Chuck wakes up, so Thanos and Professor X in unison use their mind powers to attack the goddess. Thanos and Professor X use their mind powers and soul powers to attack the goddess's soul. Yeah, right. They drew her out of her body and her physical connection to the egg. So Which was detached. Yes. Well, so they're they're all fighting, and then ultimately they're they're like, she's like, oh mercy, and they're like, no. And then she <laughs> jumps back into her body and she's like, I'm gonna screw you guys up. And then uh, Warlock's like, no, you you severed your connection to the egg, so now Thanos can use the egg to augment his own power and blah, blah, blah. And so basically they uh, just so like... So while she was fighting in the mind, or the soul, as a soul realm, Thanos was like take control in control of the egg. Yeah. The thing that gave her all the power before. Right, or at the very least he was able to manipulate like the power of, of, of Paradise Omega, which of course is also a source of her powers. Right. But in any event, they defeat her. Okay. And then Warlock traps her in the soul gem. Okay. And so she is on Soul World right now. We'll deal with her in a minute. <laughs> so they won. So they win. Yay. And then all the heroes are teleported to uh, you know, back to Avengers Mansion before Paradise Omega was destroyed, of course. Just in time. Yeah. And uh, they all kind of like muse about what happened. <laughs> oh. The heroes like, hey, pretty wow. messed up. That was all messed up. I'm, I'm so sorry we did all of this. I almost feel like I wasn't myself, but at the same time, I guess part of me always was like that. Yeah. <laughs> So then, I guess I'm a bad person. Yeah. So then Warlock goes to visit the superheroes. Mm -hmm. He's like, hi, guys. And they're like, hey, dickhead. <laughs> and he's like, what? And they're like, so we found out that the goddess was part of you, so you're a jerk. Yeah. And he's like, what? No, I'm not. No. And then they're like, you're an idiot and a jackass, and you almost destroyed the universe because, you, because you're Adam freaking Warlock. Because you decided to split yourself into good and bad. It's just so stupid. So then, like, the Infinity Watch, of course, goes to Adam Warlock's aid. They're like, hey, whoa, don't, whoa. don't you talk about Adam Warlock that way. And so this is going to be a big fight between the Infinity Watch and everybody right. in the superhero community. And then Warlock's like, screw this. And then he teleports everybody back to Monster Island. And they're like, uh. what a bunch of assholes. I can't believe they gave you such a hard time, Warlock. And he's like, well, they're only human. What can they do, really? They don't understand what it's all about. What it's all God about is it. big dumb spaceships that can shoot planets and <laughs> silly ass cosmic weapons that don't really mean anything. And so they uh, events that change nothing. And some people don't remember <laughs> and some people do. What? And, uh, and and so we go back to Soul World and the goddess of soul is there and she's like, "Hey, and she's trying <laughs> the to like goddess of soul." <laughs> So she's trying to like musician. She's trying to yell at like a couple of a couple of Adam Warlock's friends, but they can't hear her because she's a soul on Soul World. She's not a physical being. Right. And so the she's Magus like, ah! shows up. Yeah. Magus is like, "Hey, they can't hear you. You're a soul trapped in Soul World. You're just yeah. you're just a big ghost." Welcome to the club. She's like, "You, you're a defiler and an evil liar. You, you're the evil embodiment of me. I'll destroy you." And he's like, "No, you, you can't beat me. I'm physically here. You're a soul, lol." And she's like, oh. So he's physically in the soul world he, and she's... Well, because he made a body and they trapped the body on soul world. Oh, so I see. She's just a soul. They destroyed the body. Oh. So then it's actually kind of a cute moment between Spider-Man and Daredevil. They beat up a bunch of like looters. And, uh, and Spider-Man's like, well, it looks like everybody's back to normal. Like all the all, people are, people are stop people oh, are people are good again. Good. Yeah. Or, or I'm sorry, or, people are back to normal. Yeah, normal. people are they're back to normal. They're not zealots anymore. But they're also like back to crime and everything. Right. And Daredevil's like, too bad. Huh. <laughs> And then, uh, yep. And so then the the story ends with Thanos in his like on his cool starship, and then Mephisto shows up, and he's like, well, "All right, you got to pay the piper. I did my part. Yeah. You didn't do anything." I know. And then and Thanos is like, "A bargain's a bargain. You asked for that. Well, oh, and all the cosmic artifacts were destroyed when we had to kill the mm. goddess and destroy her egg. So all we have left is this one cosmic cube, which of course is enough for anybody, really. But he's right. like, so here you go." And Mephisto's like, thank you, Thanos. And of course, because the Cosmic Kingdom Grant wishes, I wish for you to be dead. <laughs> I, say, I say I wish for you to be dead. We're you looking for this Cosmic Cube? <laughs> it's not even that. He goes, oh no, it's broken. You didn't specify you wanted a working a Cosmic Cube. You said you wanted, you wanted a Cosmic Cube. You didn't, you didn't specify. The devil's in the details, Mephisto. Because uh, he doesn't even say the devil's in the no. details. No. But he does say, you know, he says something even more insipid. Even devils should beware when bargaining with Thanos of Titan. <laughs> like, it's not a proverb. It's not like, no. a, it's not an old chestnut you can, no. you can throw out in any circumstance. It's just like, hey, and don't forget the old proverb, Thanos reigns and you're a douche. <laughs> 
like, ah! oh, it was yes. like you, you've heard of like a devil's bargain. Well, that One doesn't hold the kettle to a Thanos bargain, which of course only applies to Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> this is of course the bargain where I always win, and you're and always I'm awesome, screwed. And you, you were screwed the second you engaged in combat with me. <laughs> so he like takes the cosmic cube and throws it over. So could Mephisto fucking kill Thanos anyway? <sighs> Actually, why does he even want to kill Thanos? <laughs> I don't know. Why is that a thing he wished? We need to show that the Cosmic Cube was broken. Right. Because we need to show how cool and badass Thanos is. Mephisto uh, was on Thanos' side for Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. And right. he's still upset that he, that he uh, lost washed everything up. Right. right. I guess. I don't know. It's it's just a moment to show how cool and badass Thanos is. If anybody other than Jim Starlin was writing it, yeah. and yes, Mephisto could easily destroy Thanos. Right. Oh my god. Mephisto is an elder, and Thanos is a physical being that was born. <laughs> <laughs> so you left off this whole siege. That's the story of Mole Man. Oh, that's the Mole Man. Th oh, okay. You'll never defeat the Mole Man. That was the forces of the UN fighting, fighting Mole the, Man. Fighting Monster Island. That's amazing. Yeah, and then Mole Man's going to win because he uses all like the monsters. Right. But then the but sun then goes they over all... and they, everyone dies. Can you imagine dying of a fiery death? after being defeated by the Mole Man. Yeah. Mole Man's like, nah, I took all your clothes and I punched you in the nuts. And you're like, oh man. Then you look up in the How sky. How could this day get any worse? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the heat death of the universe ought to do it. Thanks, God. Uh, oh, that's about right. God. <laughs> and the goddess goes, goddess, yeah. actually. The skeletons. Oh. <laughs> that's fucking amazing. Uh, that's right, the Mole Man finally took over. Oh, I wish. Well, I guess hell froze over because you've also destroyed the universe. Exactly. <sighs> so it's if you awesome. love these kinds of stories, and if you don't yeah. have the Infinity Crusade, I suggest you check the description box below this video and grab a copy of these two volumes. Uh, one of them was easier to get on Prime than the other. I think the first one you can get with, with Prime without any problem. Second one's a little harder to find for some reason. Mm. I don't know. Hopefully they've re they rectified the issue by then. But check that check down there anyway because nobody I know in any comic book store usually has this in print. Because usually both people who want to read the story have bought it already. Right. <laughs> Infinity Gauntlet was a stretch. <laughs> and it was a massive undertaking in and of itself conceptually. Then Infinity War. Then you made Infinity War. Which was like a mess. Like, oh my god, we're keeping, we're still going with this? Yeah. My god. And now you get Infinity Crusade. It's, <sighs> it's too much. It, it, you know, but it never stops. The idea of like a purely good, like being being actually bad because they d just give up on the universe because, yeah, because they don't have that evil they, they, like they, the they... most good thing would be for me to create a new universe that's entirely good without all this evil in it that's kind of an interesting idea it's also a way for starlin to exercise his issues with like atheism and like <laughs> theism uh -huh. and like dealing with people like i mean like it's cherry picked who believes in god or some kind of higher power and who doesn't who's right. easily manipulated who's more shaken from their faith and I mean, the whole thing is actually a, a exploration of faith right. and belief, and, and we and didn't really get into where, all that. Well, and where blind devotion can lead, mm -hmm. like to ultimate destruction, I suppose. Well, it the, always the, does, apparently. Right, and like, I guess that's a no cool... one is rewarded in a good way for just believing. No. So thank you so much for hanging out with us and watching this episode of the Infinity Crusade. Like I said, I, I think it's a contender, but I don't think it's the title <laughs> for the movie. But I can imagine. See, th that, that's the thing about Marvel movies is that in their noble tradition where they take a title from a comic book and then put it on a, on a story that has nothing to do with the comic book it came from. Yeah. I could absolutely see them doing that with this where they're yeah. like, no, the heroes who survived go on a, 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 a crusade, if you will, to, to defeat Thanos. Like, I could totally see that happening. Yeah. But I could also see them calling it like Avengers Annihilation. Yeah. And being like, even though the whole damn event is way cooler and has something to do with not that they could yeah. just be like no there was an annihilation you see right. half of the universe died so they were annihilated. Was annihilated or avengers heroes no more no <laughs> only sith deal in absolutes spoken by a jedi <laughs> huh. so you're a sith then yeah because you no just no sith. i'm a jedi <laughs> i said only sith deal in absolutes <laughs> That is an absolute, you hypocritical jackass! Well, but if it's true, then I'm that right. only Sith deal in absolutes, then how... Gosh.